an excerpt from chapter 6, Painting a Mirage. We drove from Heathrow Airport to Finsbury Park via central London and I was shocked by my first impressions of the UK. I had imagined in my mind that London would be adorned by multicolored glass skyscrapers beneath the blue sky, but the domineering grey landscape was depressing. Historic grey buildings beneath a humid grey sky greeted me like a lucid nightmare. I did not have an appreciation of graffiti on walls near railways. The artwork looked untidy and stood out like a child who turned up in Mufti on a normal school day. I had not expected to see such disorder in a first world civilization. I'd never seen so many white people in one place, everywhere. For the first time in my life, I became conscious of my blackness and felt like a minority. It was bitterly cold. The weather shook me to my core as I slowly took in my new world and swallowed the disappointment. There were no old soulful cars in sight, except a few that had been deliberately maintained to a high standard and only their number plates betrayed them. We eventually arrived in the borough of Highbury and Islington and I began to notice more foreigners as the buildings became denser. I was delighted to identify a few familiar features I'd seen on British television programs, black cabs, red London buses and telephone booths. I was truly in London, I thought in feigned excitement, which I hoped would convince me that everything would be okay. A feeling similar to what I felt the day I told my name Joy that I'd had sex for the first time. When we arrived at Mining Porsche's dingy council flat, we drank cups of tea in severely stained chipped coffee mugs. I looked around a tiny kitchen for them, a Zimbabwean scouring powder we used to remove stains from crockery and kitchen utensils, but there was none. Such solvable imperfections had not been tolerable where I'd come from. I would have scrubbed the mugs with the same vigor I'd used to squeeze pus out of stubborn acne, but there was, there was nothing to be done. A few days later, my name Porsche invited my name Joy and I to the nursing home she managed in Surrey. She let us work on trial and if we proved we could do the work, we would be offered permanent employment. My name Joy had no choice, so she excelled and was offered a job. I, on the other hand, struggled with touching, seeing and smelling gross bodily fluids oozing out of sick, elderly, foul-mouthed people who shouted profanities to the carers looking after them. I continuously belched and spewed for the short amount of time I was at the nursing home, then was dismissed with no pay the following day.